part two of prevention of cardiovascular disease with lifestyle interventions. Today, we're gonna to concentrate on some uh, uh, explanations of the pathophysiology, the development of atherosclerosis disease. Because as you can see here from this slide, uh, the great majority of the most common chronic disease, they share in red here, they share the atherosclerotic process as a fundamental uh, biological process. As you can see here in Western countries, almost 43% of all cardiovascular disease are due to coronary heart disease. Then, you know, we have a 17% of stroke, 9.4% of heart failure, uh, a 3% of um, aortic diseases, including aneurysms and peripheral arterial disease. And then vascular dementia, and these are other common, less common, but still common uh, uh, cardiovascular diseases. Now, as I said, atherosclerosis is a biological process, well, a path, path, pathological process that is responsible for 90% of all the cases of myocardial infarction 60% of strokes for the great majority of uh, heart failures and peripheral arterial disease, and then for many cases of uh, uh, dementia. Briefly, the atherosclerosis process is a progressive, uh, a progressive disease that starts uh, with a combination of endothelial dysfunction, uh, inflammatory and lipid-based processes. But what we discovered in the last few decades that immunity and inflammation play a major role in the progression of the atherosclerotic process leading to all the complications, all the diseases that, you know, we just mentioned that are the most frequent and costly disease in Western societies. Now, just to be very quick and uh, so everything starts because there, there are uh, several metabolic alterations. The most important one is a high APOA BLDL cholesterol. So when we have high LDL cholesterol, especially when combined with high blood pressure, inflammation, insulin resistance, high glucose and smoking is causing a dysfunction of the endothelium. So of these layer of cells that are dividing the bloodstream from the other part of the blood vessels. And so this endothelial dysfunction is disrupting the function by causing vasoconstriction and increased proliferation of smooth muscle cells and uh, increased uh, platelet aggregations and many other uh, uh, complications that are triggering the beginning of the atherosclerotic process. So as uh, the atherosclerotic proceeds, you know, there are basically these excess LDL cholesterol particles that are activating an immune response with transformation of the, of the macrophages into foam cells, that are, you know, responsible for the uh, thickening of the intima media of this intima media uh, space, subendothelial space. And as you can see here, these, you know, with the echo, echo Doppler, you know, we can measure the thickening. This is a normal 
common carotid artery. This is the common carotid artery. And as you can see here, you can measure the intima media thickness. And, uh, and uh, the, the, the bad news is that the process in people eating, consuming a typical Western diet starts very early. So this the position of atherosclerotic material starts uh, in the first decades of life. Indeed, in, in several studies, the first one was done in, uh, in these were autopsies of uh, young soldiers in the Korean War, 1950 and 54, showing that you know, already these young soldiers in the early 20s, they had basically these atherosclerotic uh, uh, plaques uh, in their coronary arteries and aorta. And shockingly, uh, these data have been confirmed in uh, young 15 to 30 years old uh, teenagers or uh, young adults that uh, died because of a, an accident. And in this study published in Journal of Medical College of Cardiology, as you can see here, 75% of these individuals already had sign of coronary atherosclerotic disease lesions. And 20% of them, they had already a blockage 50% blockage of one or more coronary arteries at autopsy. Again, so a typical Western diet is accelerating and driving these uh, coronary artery disease um, process. Of course, genetics plays a role, but it's, it's limited. So of course, you know, if you are born with a loss of function mutation of the LDL cholesterol receptor, or you have a loss function mutation in, uh, in this gene that is controlling in, uh, the production of nitric oxide that is important for endothelial function, or, or you have a loss of function mutation in an inflammatory, in one of these inflammatory genes like the CXCR4, then you have a higher risk of developing coronary disease at, at early age. In contrast, if you have sort of loss of function, function mutation in the PSK9 gene that is controlling LDL receptor um, uh, uh, removal, uh, you are protected. You know, these people who are born with this loss of function mutation, they have a almost 90% lower risk of, uh, of, of uh, developing coronary artery disease. And we're going to talk about later when, I'm go when we're going to discuss about the uh, cholesterol and LDL cholesterol as a major risk factor for cardiovascular disease. And Another gene, the, uh, this uh, angiopoietin-4 gene, is also protecting because it's lowering triglycerides. Um, so again, you know, apart from these uh, high and low risk mutations, most of the coronary artery disease, most of the people, the average, you know, all the bi biological processes are distributed with a Gaussian curve. So the great majority of people, uh, they, ha they, they have multi-genes that are responsible for coronary artery disease. And what we know is that, you know, you can increase the risk if you have a lifestyle that is increasing the cardiometabolic risk factor like cholesterol, triglyceride, glucose, blood pressure, if you're smoking, if you're obese, because you have insulin resistance. We're gonna discuss about it later about the, all these factors, 
or if you have a healthy lifestyle with uh, resulting in uh, very low cholesterol, high HDL cholesterol, low triglyceride, insulin sensitivity, low inflammation, low blood pressure, low glucose, you can drastically reduce the risk and the progression, or you don't have basically no progression, no atherosclerotic plaques, especially if you have been, if you had this uh, healthy cardiometabolic profile since you were a kid. To support what I'm telling you uh, are the data of this study published in Lancet 2017 on a population of uh, forager horticulturalist uh, men and women living in the Bolivian uh, Amazon. Uh, and uh, in this study, they performed a coronary art artery calcium by CT scan of 705 middle-aged and older individuals. And as you can see here, they found that basically uh, these individuals, unlike people living in US, uh, where the control group uh, in their 50s, the great majority had basically uh, zero uh, calcium score. So they had clean coronary arteries compared to 75%. And as you can see, as people, they get older, uh, uh, still these people, 65% of these Amazonians had zero calcium score compared to only 19% of people living in US with zero calcium score. But most importantly, as you can see here from this graph, if you look uh, at people uh, that uh, had a calcium score uh, higher than 100. So basically they had a positive calcium score at 50 years old and 50 to 64, basically zero people, basically the great majority of people uh, in the Amazonian had, uh, di didn't have a calcium score that higher than 100 uh, compared to 17% in the 55 to 64 year old group. But then, you know, if you look at Americans in the 75 to 84, half of them, they had a, a positive calcium score and only 8% of the Amazonians. So these data are strongly, strongly suggesting that coronary artery disease is a disease typical of the Western societies eating an unhealthy diet and having an unhealthy lifestyle. These are other data. These are uh, uh, Echo Doppler that I acquired when I was working in US at Washington University. And uh, this is the common carotid artery of a 82 years old uh, man practicing calorie restriction with optimal nutrition. We're gonna discuss about it later. This is the right common carotid artery. As you can see here, there is no thickening. So the, the arteries are clean. So, so this is a... a of course, this is anecdotal, but just to give you an, an, an idea of what you can find, this is a 77 years old runner. This guy was running 50 miles per week. And as you can see here, sort of, there is a lot of thickening, a lot of deposition of atherosclerotic material in the subendothelial space. And here is the bifurcation, the bulb, so, sorry, the bulb of the, the common cardiac arteries, the, you know, the bulb, and here you can see like a, 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 a a nice plaque here and here, the position of atherosclerotic material. If we progress, this is the bifurcation the, of the common, of the internal and external carotid artery of, of the 80, 82 years old CR practitioner, clean. And here instead of in the, in the runner, there is a nice plaque here. And this is the common carotid artery, the internal, the left internal carotid artery of the 80, 82 years old man practicing calorie restriction, basically clean. And in the athlete, in the master athlete, there is a 50, there is a huge plaque that is occluding 50% of the lumen. Now, as the 
uh, process, the atherosclerotic process proceeds, and then there is more and more inflammation, immune activation. Uh, there is the formation of the of a necrotic core with death of uh, the macrophages. There is uh, instability, and the cap can rupture. And when it ruptures, the plaque becomes unstable. Unstable means that, you know, if there is this rupture, the, there is a lesion and the platelets are trying to repair the, the damage by, by aggregating and the result is an occlusion. So this is the, 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 the cap that has been ruptured and uh, the result is a thrombus, platelet aggregation that is occluding the coronary artery or one of the arteries delivering uh, blood to the brain or the kidney or the gut. And the result is an infarction because no oxygen and nutrients can flow downstream of the blockage of the, of the thrombus. And therefore you, you have uh, uh, the, 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 the tissue uh, downstream dies, as you can see here. So this is the, the coronary artery. This is the thrombus, this is the imaging, and this is the dead part downstream. This is a massive myocardial infarction, okay? And these can happen again, as I said, uh, in, in, in the blood vessels delivering blood to the brain and you have a stroke can be, we're going to discuss about it, can it be a classical uh, or a covert stroke, silent stroke, if it happens in the, in the white matter, in the, in the arteries uh, supplying blood to the white matter, not to the gray matter of the brain. And you can have these in the renal arteries, in the peripheral arteries, and, and, uh, and, and then, you know, uh, these atherosclerotic process can also cause a disruption of the, of the, of the blood vessels uh, with the weakening of the uh, 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 smooth muscle cell and, and the tissue layer with enlargement and they can break, you can have a rupture and, and basically a massive bleeding and death. So aortic aneurysms. Okay, so for today, I think, you know, I was able to give you a short uh, uh, explanation of this major process that is atherosclerosis that, as I said, is responsible for many of the common cardiovascular diseases we see in our hospital. And this is important because then in the next lectures, I can dissect how different cardiometabolic risk factors are important for the beginning and development and progression of this atherosclerotic process and how different lifestyle can prevent the, the, the uh, or delay the, 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 the development uh, of this process.